Hey guys, Colin Smith here. So this week I've got something really cool for you. I'm going to show you how to create a photo cube inside of Photoshop. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 3D photo cube. It's going to be real fun. What we're going to do is grab some pictures that I've taken and we're going to map them onto a 3D cube. You're going to love this one. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing a hat this week. It's a little bit cold. We're hitting the low 60s right now in Southern California. I know, don't be a hater, but let's go. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're starting here with a selfie that I took in Hawaii, so this is me uh, doing the little tiny planet thing. So I'm actually, just for fun, I'm gonna take these little round tiny planets and then map those to the square cube because I just think there's something ironic and funny about it. If you wanna learn how to create these little tiny planet effects like you see here, I've got another tutorial, just click the link there and check that one out. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be using the 3D tools inside of Photoshop. So we're gonna go select that image here, we've got that move tool, then we're going to just go up and we are going to go to the 3D tab. Then we're going to go down to the new mesh from layer and mesh preset. Now you'll see a couple here, cube wrap or cube. Don't do the cube wrap because that will put the same image on all the surfaces. We don't want to do that. We want to mix it up a little bit. So we're going to grab cube. Now you're going to get this little warning. Yeah, you could call it an egg screen, but I kind of like it. Would you like to switch to the 3D workspace? Uh, the reason for that is there's a lot of tools here in Photoshop that are available inside the 3D workspace that are not available in the regular workspace. So if you want to have access to those tools, choose yes. Otherwise, you're going to be digging around trying to find the tools you want. So, you know, you could say, uh, don't show this again, but that wouldn't be a good option. So let's just click yes and notice our workspace changes. And we've now got this 3D workspace. Awesome. So here we go, we've got our image. Nothing looks any different until we click and drag. Now when we click and drag, notice we've got a little cube. So we're like well on the way to doing what we want to do. So all we want to do now is just map a different photograph to that top surface and to the side. So what we can do is actually, let's start on the side. Notice right now I've got the default tool, which is the orbit tool selected. And we're just going to click on there. And then when we do, what it does is it enables some things in the 3D panel. So if we go to the 3D panel, if you don't see that, make sure you're in the 3D workspace or just go up under window and just grab 3D. And this is our panel here. And what you're going to do is you're going to see, it's going to show us, yeah, the right side is selected. So whatever we click on here, it's going to show us under the cube, which surface we've got. So this is our front, notice that. So if we don't know if it's left or right, click there, it shows right. Then what we can do is the material. The materials, what you see, it's the uh, image on there. We're going to double click on there, opens up the properties panel. Now under properties, we're just going to go to diffuse and we're going to click here. And what we're going to do is replace the texture because right now it's just a gray box, which is super boring. So we're going to replace it with uh, another one of my tiny planet images. So we're going to grab that one and click open and boom, we've got that there. We can click around if you want to have a look at it. See that? There we go. We've got a nice, uh, quadcopter there flying over the thing that's actually the cover of one of my quadcopter dvds that i did for the phantom all right so we're going to click on the top here now we see the top is selected top material double click open it go to diffuse and now we're going to go down to replace texture once again let's grab another i've got this one i did at balboa it's another tiny planet click ok and uh, and there we go so what we've done is essentially we've mapped these surfaces. Now the other sides don't have anything. You could add to those just by simply selecting them and you'll see them in there. But we can only really, uh, if you see this happen, just undo and then click away and make sure no faces are selected. And now we can just uh, rotate the whole thing. So here's the thing with a cube when we're looking at it in a 2D format, it's impossible to see more than three sides at once. So unless you're animating it, you don't need to do all the other stuff. All right, so we've kind of got that going. There's a couple more things we need to do. One of them is set up the lighting and shadows. So as you see in the bottom there, there's a shadow there. You can see that. What we want to do is get to our lighting. So if you go onto the 3D panel, click on the little light bulb, and you will now see this little light thing. So what we're using is an infinite light. And you can actually go up here and you can see under the properties, it's showing us, oh, okay, we're using a 3D light. So we're just using a custom preset. You know, we could change all these settings if we wanted, but um, but we're not going to. So what we can do is just click here and we can change the light direction. Notice that as I drag that around, that changes where the light is. So it's pretty cool. Um, you'll also see this little widget. At any time you click on that, that's going to turn on that lighting widget. 
And then when we do that, um, we're going to see that. So what we can do is see that shadow. Once we turn on our lighting widget, click it, and then that widget comes on. We can actually hit the shift key and drag in the shadow if we want also to change that direction of that lighting. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So that light is going to be about there and uh, it's getting a little closer. So one of the things we want to do is just click on our light there so we can see that there's our infinite light. And by the way, you could change the lights here. You could grab new types of lights there. Uh, what we're going to do, you can change the color or the intensity of that light. And you'll also see the shadow. So I can turn that off and then that shadow will disappear. But I'd like to have the shadow on, so I'm just going to turn it on there. And we can soften that shadow by dragging here, and that will now create a soft edge shadow. So what we want to do is just go to the Layers panel. I'm just going to put some white behind it, so we're just going to create a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and then I'm just going to fill that with white. Command Backspace will do that. Awesome, looking good. So we've basically got our effect there. The one last thing you want to do is you want to render this. Um, so it will look better quality and to render it what you're going to do is hold down everything that's command option shift uh, and that would be control alt shift on windows and then hit the r key for render and then um, it's just going to start passing on this thing to render it but what you want to do is make sure first of all you select that 3d layer and then hit that keyboard shortcut and now it's going to start rendering that so you can see it looks kind of fuzzy so what i'll do is i'll just uh, speed this up a little bit so you can see it when it's done because it takes a little bit of time one of the things about rendering is that uh, a lot of the time if you're doing rendering you really want to have something else to do at that time because it really it's slow it's super slow so if you're doing animation which you can actually do 3d animation inside of photoshop maybe i'll cover that in another tutorial if you guys are interested in that and if you want to do that what you got to do is literally hit that render button before you go to bed at night because it's so slow it takes forever <sighs> I also have this as a written tutorial on Photoshop Cafe. So if you want to see the steps in writing, if I went too fast, maybe you missed something, click the link underneath and you can see the written tutorial. You can follow it through step by step. Also check out my little tiny planet thing. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm now going to show you the rendered version. Uh, if you like this, uh, hit that little like button. You know, if you're still watching, hit it. Um, and also do us a favor, hit that subscribe button because I'm making a new episode every single week and I want you to see it. And uh, the best way for that is for you to become a subscriber. And also you will get added coolness, rainbows and unicorns for subscribing to Photoshop Cafe. Anyway, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, until next time, I'll see you guys at the cafe.